Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you again, uh, both of you, for, for testifying. I want to start this conversation by talking about not just the FY24 request, but what level of funding Congress is likely to pass. House Republicans have proposed cuts to the international affairs budget of nearly 31%. Um, Assistant Secretary Fee and Assistant Administrator Muyungwa, could you please provide the committee a brief overview of what these kinds of cuts could mean for our work in Africa and our ability to lead and do all of the things that we want you to be able to do? Dr. Mande is a great partner to me, so we never know which one should <laughs> speak first. Um, this is an exciting time uh, to be involved in African affairs. Uh, finally, uh, the United States is, as President Biden said in December, all in on Africa. Um, we have many opportunities, as, as we've discussed. And again, we believe our values, our approach, our processes, our innovation, our technologies, everything you can imagine uh, makes us um, the best bet for our African friends. Um, but to capitalize on this opportunity, we need those resources so we have uh, sufficient funds uh, to respond uh, to the programming needs, um, both building on the excellent programs we have that are well appreciated and had, have had a demonstrable impact, and to invest in new efforts uh, such as the Global Fragility Act uh, to make sure that we can um, uh, address what have been sort of entrenched challenges and problems. Thank you so much for that question. I'd add three other areas where we would see uh, impact. Obviously, it would impact our whole uh, development agenda on the African continent. But let me focus on uh, three of those. If we cut um, uh, the, the budget, Power Africa um, would not be able to deliver electricity to 2.8 million uh, households across the continent. And we know what an amplifier, the access to energy is in terms of uh, development. Similarly, uh, with Prosper Africa, if we were to uh, cut the request there, we would not be able to really lean into uh, the plans that we have to advance two-way trade between the United States and, and, and Africa to unlock the business potential that um, resides on the continent and also to encourage more American businesses to invest in Africa. The third area I would focus on is on the education uh, front. Uh, if we were unable to, uh, if we did not get the requests that we have uh, put in, the literacy rates in Africa had already taken uh, a downward trajectory due to COVID and other factors and we've been working to build that up to try and raise those literacy rates. Uh, the implications uh, for development, again, given education's impact or link to development is huge, particularly on a continent where one in four in five will be African by 2050. Yeah, thank you. And, and I hope my colleagues on, on both sides of the aisle hear um, how detrimental the, the proposed cuts would be for the things we all want to do uh, on the African continent. Really quickly, in our last minute and a half, I, I want to talk about the Global Fragility Act. Um, as you uh, both know, um, uh, you know, Mozambique and coastal West Africa are priority countries, and this law is really about doing things differently, um, which means coordinating across the interagency and realigning our, our funding and empowering local partners. And while we know that a different bureau uh, is the lead at the State Department, Congress expects the regional bureaus to be part of uh, this too, um, and to prioritize the country strategies. So Assistant Secretary Fee, I, I just wanted to, you to discuss um, how you plan to, to do this uh, for Mozambique and coastal West Africa. Thanks very much for, uh, for your support for this incredibly important program. I want you to know that I have directed all of the ambassadors in countries that are benefiting from this program that this is the, should be their number one priority, that we need to have this program succeed to demonstrate that the new authorities and resources you gave us and the new way of thinking and approaching will work. As you know, we're focused on three different types of activities, social inclusion, government responsiveness, and accountability of security forces. I think we're already beginning to see the impact of the initial um, funding, and um, the teams work together uh, closely, and we worked closely with the other bureau, the CSO Bureau, um, and I'm confident um, you're gonna see a good return on that investment. Thank you. I